had no idea it would sell like it did. And I had no idea it would sell overseas. I didn't even think that it would cross cultural boundaries like that. It was very popular in Japan and so then I was contacted by a Japanese anime company who wanted to make an anime series. We will return the gems to each of the seven medallions on this belt. Del Toro Quest is a children's novel series written by an Australian author, this woman, Emily Rodder. In 2006 it was adapted into an anime series with about 50 canonical episodes and a few additional episodes that act as filler. The adaptation covered all eight books in the series and has some additional non-canonical concluding episodes after the proper climax of the story. These additional and unnecessary episodes were never dubbed. The adaptation was done by OLM, the people famous for Berserk and something to do with monsters in your pocket. But to me, this is insane. Del Toro Quest is literally an Australian anime. Del Toro Quest is very popular in Australia. It's probably more popular here than it is anywhere else in the world because Australian art very rarely gets exported in a mainstream way. Just look at our choices in sport. Literally no other countries play them. We are an island nation, completely cut off from the rest of the world, and our only neighbours are a bunch of sheep herders. So it's wildly fascinating to me that a children's novel series written by a woman in Sydney somehow became an anime. To put the popularity of Del Toro Quest into perspective, it was literally part of my primary school education. The anime as well as the novels. Classes in school did a unit in English on Del Toro Quest where we read the novels and then afterwards watched the show. The Australian anime is part of the Australian education system, or at least it was when I was in the system. But to reiterate, anime is part of the Australian curriculum. That's insane to me. I never really put this together until recently. I knew Del Toro Quest was written by an Australian author, and I knew the adaptation was an anime, but I never thought about it like this. There's literally an Australian anime and no one talks about it. This show aired on Cartoon Network exclusively in Australia. The only stable version of the show in existence is the Cartoon Network DVD release of the series in Australia. It's very Australian. You literally can't find a full subversion of this show anywhere on the internet. Many people have looked. It's quite niche, but the dub can be found on Crunchyroll in full as far as I'm aware. So the Australian anime Del Toro Quest is almost a forgotten or unsung chapter in anime history. So I thought I'd make a video talking about this weird anomaly in anime's history for you today. So what is Del Toro Quest? It's a largely tropey children's good versus evil story about a fictional fantasy medieval country called Del Toro, where the bad guy, the Shadow Lord, has taken over Del Toro, and our protagonists Leaf, Barter, and Jasmine have to journey around the country to collect seven gems that when brought together are supposed to defeat the Shadow Lord. That's the conceit of the books, there's a book for each gem, and then a final book which is basically all climax. It's one massive final fight with the Shadow Lord. That's Del Toro Quest, filled with world building, classic anime tropes, and themes like never give up and try your best. Del Toro Quest, if this video interests you at all, is a children's series. It's more mature than, say, the Pokemon anime, but it's not as violent as something like Naruto. That's where we sit in the maturity range. But in terms of genre, this series is also interesting because it's a series for children, but it's not a shonen. By definition, it was never published in a shonen magazine because it was originally a novel series. So it doesn't have shonen tropes, though it does have a sort of tournament arc. But the series is full of classic fantasy tropes. It's far more Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings than Naruto and Dragon Ball Z. But the most interesting thing about the series is the titular statement. It's an Australian anime. But there's not so much expressly and uniquely Australian about the series. Series. The series isn't set in Australia, it's set in the fictional country of Del Toro, but by virtue of Emily Rodder being Australian, some cultural context has clearly seeped through into the series. Some of the names of things in particular in Del Toro struck me as very Australian names. The fact that the big river in the world of Del Toro is called the Broad River seemed quite Australian to me as well as the road that was called Miller's Road. Both these things stuck out to me and I don't necessarily know how to explain why. The subbed version of the show seems to reference the story's Australian origins far more than the dub does. According to YouTube, one of the Del Toro Quest openings used a Delta Goodrum song. Delta Goodrum is a famous singer in Australia and her song fits the OP and it's a nice little touch from the sub team to reference the series' Australian origins. But in the dub that was actually done by a Canadian studio, all 50 plus episodes have one OP and it's just an instrumental. An extremely nostalgic instrumental for me, but an instrumental nonetheless. 
This show did air in the period of Cartoon Network where they were massively fucking with the OPs and making them all 30 seconds long. But is Del Toro Quest worth watching if we remove the obvious massive amounts of nostalgia I have for the show and we remove the unique Australian background? The answer is maybe. If you are influenced to watch this show because of this video, you should probably temper your expectations. This show will not blow your mind, it will not be your new favourite anime, but I do think it's a fun time if you understand what it is. Firstly, to watch the show you're going to have to sit through the dub. This may immediately disqualify the show for many people watching right now. The voice work, while not being great, is tolerable. It's no worse than your average show, but it's not necessarily any better either. So your usual hang-ups about terrible dubs will come through here. The voice actors on the show seem to be weirdly unique to this series as well. When I looked into the voice cast of the show, they didn't have many credits outside of Del Toro Quest. I don't know if this show needed to be any more unique, but there you go. But besides the voice work, the story itself has its strengths. Because Del Toro Quest comes from a novel series that was finished before the series began production, the series is tightly written. Everything happens for a reason, there are rarely wasted scenes, and basically everything that happens services the plot. Clearly Emily Rodder had thought everything out before she started writing, because everything comes back in Del Toro Quest. The climax of the series basically incorporates every living cast member in the show, which is great. They were all introduced with an express purpose, and this purpose is being realised when we get to the finale. The well thought out nature of the series leads directly into the mystery angle every book in the series went for. I mentioned Harry Potter earlier, every book in the Del Toro Quest series, and therefore every five or so episodes, has a mystery just like the Harry Potter franchise. Who's the Half-Blood Prince? Who's the heir of Slytherin? Who put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire? Del Toro Quest emulates this design philosophy. Every novel has a mystery that factors into the climax, which usually is a fight with a monster of some sort. Also, the final novel and the final stretch of episodes have multiple really clever twists that I think are rewarding. And these twists don't come out of nowhere, there is a ton of foreshadowing for every mystery in the show, and I think that deserves some recognition. This show also has some great character designs. Jasmine I've talked about in the past, I'm very fond of her. Narita is also great, she's super hot. Doom is a character design that's edgy enough to fit his fucking glorious name. The gnomes are pretty cool looking, a lot of the monster designs are great. Tegan and her children are cool, Glock will fuck you up. The character designs are good in Del Toro Quest. It might actually be the best thing about the show. But another interesting thing about this show is its weird use of CGI. Keep in mind the show came out in 2006, long before CGI became a massive talking point in anime communities. Del Toro Quest uses CGI for each one of the Guardians, or the final bosses of each book. As a kid I never noticed, and it never even registered in me that the Guardians were animated differently, which is insane. It's interesting that as kids we really didn't care how anything looked, because watching the show now I can obviously tell that they are animated using CG. It just shows that as kids we could consume anything and be none the wiser. As for the CG itself, some of it looks better than others, and none of it particularly looks great. But what's most interesting here is that it seems like this was an intentional design choice rather than a cheap alternative. Anime contemporarily uses CGI mostly as a cost-saving method. It's cheaper to make models than draw frames, but in Del Toro Quest, CG is never used outside of the Guardians, which really makes each of the respective monsters stand out. It was interesting for me on my rewatch to notice that this seemed to be an artistic choice rather than a cop-out. Ethical CGI usage? I'm telling you, there's something weirdly unique about this show. The overall weird uniqueness this show has, with its storytelling, its cultural origin, and its aesthetic, is its strongest selling point. Hideaki Anno once talked about anime cannibalizing itself because all it does is reference itself and get influenced by itself. When he believes that anime thrives when it looks outside itself for inspiration and innovation. With Evangelion, he got biblical. Cowboy Bebop draws inspiration from literally everything. Things like Attack on Titan have you unique Nordic and MMA through lines, My Hero Academia draws from Western superhero conventions, anime that gets popular and is interesting always have something uniquely not anime about them. They bring a new element to the table of anime, and Del Toro Quest is certainly unique if nothing else. So I think this series has some overall worth. So I'd say Del Toro Quest is worth a look. As I mentioned earlier, there's a whole book of climax in the novel series, and that translates into a run of about 12 final episodes that are pretty great. It won't be a new favourite anime, but it's an interesting, seemingly lost to time page in anime's winding history. No one talks about the Australian anime and I thought I'd remedy that with this video. If this is the first you're hearing about Del Toro Quest, I hope you got something out of this video, and even if it's just the knowledge that there is an anime based off an Australian story. And if this show was part of your childhood or your primary education, I hope I brought back some nostalgic memories and maybe influenced you to look back at the series. If you enjoy this type of different content, make sure to show your appreciation 
appreciation by talking with me in the comments or on Twitch. Like the video, subscribe, do all that stuff. Patreon support would be amazing as well. Support links in the description below. Thanks.